the end of that chapter, you talk about Sisyphus and, you know, everyone always is quoting Camus, you know, we have to imagine um, Sisyphus happy. There's tons of philosophy memes that are made about this. And you say, yeah, hey, I don't want to imagine him happy. And I don't want him to imagine himself happy. Can you, do you remember, do you have that like on the top of your mind? Can you explain why we shouldn't imagine him happy? I remember the frustration of, <laughs> of reading that passage <laughs> and thinking the poor guy, the, the worst thing for him would be to imagine that this interminable um, burden of rolling this um, rock up to the top of the mountain only for it to fall down again, then he rolls it up again. Like, don't don't settle into that. Don't think that right. that you're happy in that. And and I guess part of that is is a critique of of the rat race, isn't it? So our our Sisyphean task is, you know, the next thousand dollars that I make is going to make me happy. The 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 next promotion I get is gonna is gonna do it for me. The next house that I buy, you know, the next relationship that I fall into is gonna be the one that's gonna finally make me happy. And then, you know, lo and behold, surprise, surprise, we find that it doesn't. Oh, well, you know, the next one. And so, so modernity conditions us to be that Sisyphus. And I think that the, the last thing that we need is to consider that happiness. Because at mm. that point, you, you become unable to see the reality of your own situation, which is being, you're, you're being played, you're being had by, by a system that just wants you to think that the next shiny object that you buy is the one that's going to make you happy because the money from that shiny object is going to go into the pockets of another person who thinks that the, the profit that they make is going to make them happy. And it's, it's a self-perpetuating right. system. And, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a huge false consciousness. I don't think it's controversial to say that these things in a fundamental way don't make us happy. I think recent statistics on depression and, and loneliness and so forth really militate against the idea that Sisyphus is happy. And yeah. so I think we, we need to be constructively unhappy with the way that modern society catechizes us into believing that happiness is just around the corner. We just need to roll the stone at the hill one more time and that's going to be it. Um, yeah. No, it isn't. We need something radically different to that. You know, Sisyphus yeah. needs to, to sort of sit on his boulder at the bottom of the mountain um, and crack his Bible open and, and yeah. start, start understanding um, the God who doesn't make him into a slave, uh, but who died for him to set him free. You know, the, the mm -hmm. God whose, whose yoke is, is easy and whose burden is light and who gives him rest. I guess that's it, isn't it? Sisyphus needs to find rest and he will never do so unless he becomes unhappy. Yeah. And I, I love that because um, I believe like imagining him happy is was kind of a subversive take. Like, all right, fine. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get strong by doing this. I'm gonna have big muscles. Whatever. I, you're 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 damning me to do this forever. I'm gonna be subversive and just enjoy it. And so there's kind of like, yeah, being being happy. Uh, you know, maybe it's like a stoic uh, mentality or something like that. And and it can be read in, in a bunch of different ways. And and you're saying, look, no, I prefer I prefer a, a more uh, subversive resistance. Um, because uh, you, I think I think you you said it was from uh, Brueggemann that says um, you know this is just capitulating to the insatiable gods of imperial productivity. This is not being subversive. You're just you're just accepting your lot in this system, and you're just forcing yourself to try and be happy. The real subversive thing is to step out from it. And then you, yeah, you, you talk about what you said here that he needs he needs God's rest. He needs to take on Christ's yoke uh, and his burden, which is easy and light and. I love that, man. I, I thought that was really, um, I thought that was a really succinct way of um, showing a biblical, critical, um, you know, theoretical critique, I guess, of even a subversive um, concept in our culture today. Even amongst, you know, the educated, the philosophers of our day, are like, "Hey, look, I'm going to be Sisyphus. I'm going to be happy." Like, no, no, we need to critique that as well. Um, through through biblical theology, which I, I thought was fantastic, man. So I, I really, I had to talk about that because I thought that one was really fascinating.